Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Now, what we find is that in today's world, we have a huge problem with youth, youth unemployment. We say <coughs> in a lot of countries, <coughs> developed and developing, we see that many young people that do go through university don't ultimately get jobs. We think that this is hugely problematic. We think that this creates like a detriment in terms of the choices that these people can make in their lives. It creates a detriment in the choices they can make about careers. It detriments the possibility of these people to make choices about you know, forming families and so on. And generally, it affects society because it also puts a huge burden on the state to give out like welfare programs and so on and so forth. We think that one of the main reasons for which this happens is that people make the wrong choices in choosing their university degree. We think that also universities seem to encourage that because it's in their benefit. What we would propose is that like, public universities should be required to reduce the number of degrees, of, 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 of like spots for, degree, for student degrees in those areas that are statistically like, noticed to have bad uh, employment outcomes. We would say like it would be reasonable for us to reduce it by 70% of like the people, of, of, of the quantum of people that go out and don't find jobs uh, with that degree. We think, we would say 70%, not 100% because you know there might be a margin. We think that the market might fluctuate, but we think that this is reasonable. Okay, the first argument that we want to give you is about the role of public university, of publicly funded universities, and how this actually relates to employment and to enabling opportunities on an economic level as much as on an educational level. And therefore, this is this is this is the appropriate like course of action for publicly funded universities. Secondly, we want to tell you how the state has a role in shaping choice and how people and how like students or like people that become students do not make the right choices and uh, end up having less choice in the long run. And thirdly, uh, we want to I want to tell you why it, a blanket rule is necessary. We need to have this rule from the government because we think universities don't have the proper incentives to do it themselves. Firstly, let's talk about the role of public university. We say the public university, the, poor, the point of public university is giving opportunities to go to university to have high level education for young people that don't have the opportunity to pay for their education. We think that this is the, the, main, the main reason we do this. We also do this because we want like, to generally uh, rise up the educational level of a particular country or a particular region. And I think that that's necessary because we want to like raise the general level of prosperity and the general level of fulfillment extent in and of itself. But ultimately, the great value of education comes from the fact that it enables people to like find work that is fulfilling, to find work that is in accordance to their education, and to find work that enables the things that they actually like in life. We think that it's problematic when the when people like go to university, get an education, but like in fields that do not allow them to work. Or do not or even if they allow them to work, they don't allow them to work in the field that they've studied. Like if they study arts and then they have to work at McDonald's or they have if they study like film directing and they have to like be like a cameraman for a television for a tele television station. We think that this is not the, like the purpose for which they had done their education. We think that this is problematic because this, this, this is in the detriment of choice. We think that public, publicly funded universities have to take this into consideration. We think that publicly funded universities have to like, make one of their main purposes to, enable, to, to like, enable people to have the empowerment of choice throughout their lives and to be able to actualize the education that they get through the university degree. We think that that's absolutely necessary. We think it's not sufficient for public universities, not sufficient to fulfill their missions just if they, they, give, a, the, they give an education. They have to give a useful education. You get an education that will be useful throughout these people's lives, please. It's actually if education raises the self insurance or happiness, why don't you believe that even if they don't have jobs in a specific uh, structure, they still yeah. do feel very happy because okay. they are? I mean, yeah, I'm going to answer this point. Moving on to my to my to my uh, like role of the state to shape choice. We think that it might be fulfilling to have a university degree, but we think that like when you when when these people go into like certain degrees that don't offer them employment opportunities and choices afterwards, they don't really see like the future possibility of choice. Like it's oftentimes behavioral economics have shown us that people don't like 
look to the long run, especially people when they're young and they have like ambitions and they don't really take into account all the information necessary upon that market. We think that firstly universities have that information, have the access to those statistics and can take an objective decision. We think that a lot of the time students can't because they might be passionate about a field but they, won't, they don't realize the fact that they will never be able to work in that field. What we say is that it, it's better to have a university education than not to have one but what we say it's even better to have the university education that will actually bring you for fulfillment Longer. Because what we want to say is, look, we're not saying that, we, that the universities will just cut degrees. We can say you, they can supplement degrees in areas that like have a, 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 like a high employment. We think that that's also something possible. But what we want to say is, in terms of choice, we think the government already like shapes choice. We think that that's legitimate for it to do. We see that like government like conditionals welfare on certain types of behavior and incentivizes certain types of behavior for those people that are dependent on welfare. We also say that like it taxes products that are harmful. We say that this is also something to shape choice. I think the subsidies in themselves are meant to shape choices, like to shape to, 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 to motivate people to go and work and do business in some areas and not do that in other areas. We think that this is exactly the sort of thing that we're doing. We're subsidizing those areas that will bring back to society and will also give the full fulfillment to these people. Because what we say is that students that benefit from public funding and university education also have a responsibility because like the taxpayer, generally the public has given them this opportunity and we think that one of the reasons is also the fact that like we expect that they give back to society. We say if these people don't go into the most productive field that they possibly can, they won't be able to give back to society and we think that this is one of the main purposes. So we think this is, this is why it's legitimate for us to shape choice. Thirdly, why we need a blanket rule? We need a blanket rule because universities themselves don't have the incentive to do this because they want to get the most money from the government as possible per student. So we think that they have, they, they will encourage like a lot of degrees even if they're not necessarily useful, even if they don't encourage, like they don't assure a good future for their students. So that's why we think that the government has to impose this limitation upon public universities, publicly funded universities in order to actually, in order to actually have a public, a public university program that works, that creates the best outcomes for people on the long run and also fulfills the main purposes of shaping the proper choice and the roles of uh, public universities in general. Thank you. Okay, I think that the mistake of government style of the house is that they never explain why then when you basically decreasing the number of people to study in certain major, then suddenly the work status or employment becoming better, ladies and gentlemen, in status quo. Because that's all the burden of proof of the government self house. We think that when you do this, what the lecturers will do is that, yes, lecturers might have find less time for basically evaluating the test result of their student, ladies and gentlemen. But we don't think that it has something to do with the quality of the student at the end when they pass test. We think that there, if there is more student and the teacher need to find more time to basically, you, you know, calculating the rest test or, or, or reviewing the, the test of that. We think that what this is what lecturers should do, right? To put a maximum effort to basically evaluating their student, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm going to talk three issues here, or I, and why we think this is a very bad proper, uh, 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 the a very bad uh, mechanism from the government because you sacrifice the people who needs education the most, ladies and gentlemen, which is student and accessibility, ladies and gentlemen. Because we think first, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk about why it is not justified for you to put the blame on you, the blame on you university ladies and gentlemen. Before first, we think that when you say that this is the fault of universities, we say no. Sometimes universities has followed standards that government have, have established at the first place. The curriculum that government have established ladies and gentlemen, even if they have, you know, the rights to us or develop this, but it follows the standard by government, right? So sometimes it is the mistake of government. For example, government put a higher standard on 
the rural area ladies and gentlemen which basically have a lower a lower development on educational process so they need a lower standard first to basically adjust so the student can follow this sometimes it is the mistake of the student of the government to buy a higher standard in rural area so that the student can follow this or second of all even if for example the university have already got a good facilities or a good lecturers but sometimes there is a poor economical system that established job the government so at that particular time the employment rate is basically low ladies and gentlemen for example in United States of America, in United States of America when there is an economical crisis automatically the employment process in general university will be low because there is no company at all it's basically collapsing ladies and gentlemen. so now it's not mutually the mistake of the university itself but second of all it is not sometimes even if the university good it is sometimes Basically, the idea of how there is a basically, a, you know, regional, regional deployment of university, right? And the regional development of, of the student is basically sometimes different from other urban area, for example, and rural area. And this is not only the mistake of university, sometimes because the development of uh, 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 vocational, of, of the vocational school, elementary school or high school is bad at the first place. So the resources that entering those kind of university has a different starting four point from urban area for for example, ladies and gentlemen. So this is create a different standard so that your university have a lower rate of unemployment. Doesn't necessarily mean they don't have a good standard at the first place, ladies and gentlemen. But before I move on, yes, sir. Timing. Yes, we know because this is what exactly I'm talking about. Sometimes our university have already maximum effort, but other causes, but other things causes the rate of unemployment becoming decreasing, ladies and gentlemen, in our status quo. And you cannot fully blame a new university and cut the fund for and cut the major for this kind of university. But even if, for example, this is basically university failure in creating this, we think that what government should do is basically to create a better monitoring system towards this kind of university so they have a better evaluation system for their lecturers for example for their student not sacrificing the interests of student because when you do this mechanism the one who will be sacrificed is basically the student why ladies and gentlemen because we think ladies and gentlemen in status quo the, the, the purpose of funding and this is not justified because we think in status quo the pur purpose of public funding is to create a, a minimum accessibility of education for all society a minimum rights that you can access as much as possible no matter when you are stupid no matter when you are clever ladies and gentlemen we said that it is not basically on a result basis ladies and gentlemen because they in their mechanism it's based on the result basis it is basically on the principle that everyone has to equip themselves that everyone the society that everyone has to be equipped by the society by the government to basically face an adulthood session of their life to basically more productive for example this is basically the principle of public funding that's why in healthcare even if in this particular year the healthcare or one hospital funded by the government have more people die in there or have more people basically becoming more sick government doesn't necessarily mean cut the funding or creating more people who cannot enter the hospital right because this is one of particular of public uh, public rights to get healthy including education ladies but if because when you do this ladies and gentlemen the one who will be sacrificed the most is people who have less intellectual ladies and gentlemen why because there is a test right to enter in university and when there is less places or less spot for them in university meaning less less unfortunate you know in, intellect less and intellectual people will will not be entered this university yes, because there is a higher higher test you know score for them and a small a, a smaller spot for them meaning this is basically violating because people with less intellectuality is the one who need the support the most ladies and gentlemen from university who need more education and more skill to face the next reality ladies and gentlemen we think that this is bad at the first place but third and most importantly on how it will create a sec it, it will basically sacrifice an unfair degree unfair major certain major which is unfavoritism program ladies and gentlemen because sometimes there is for example a literature major for example literature major you cannot get a job instantly ladies and gentlemen sometimes you need to write a book and in the process to write a book you need years to do that and you can you know put your your book in publishes 
sometimes you need more than three ten years by this by this by this by, uh, we think by this mechanism you will you know decrease chances of this literature people to enter more people and the access of people who want to becoming a novelist for example is basically becoming becoming cut ladies and gentlemen because they need a lot of time to basically you know pursue their dream at the first place ladies and gentlemen we think that when you, uh, we think this is why less less or uh, those the type of job is basically needs more time to basically success is basically being sacrificed and when you basically put this you basically delay more people to have more skill because even if in status quo they are jobless and have at least they, they have more skills to becoming an entrepreneur for example and this rather than only a high school graduate they have more skill government basically providing more option for them ladies and even if they are they are not being employed at the first place we think that this motion should fall thank you I can think of no other motion that I can empathize with more because as a film student I am tired of having 16 students each year enrolled and having 16 directors each year graduating from film school and then having no options because the industry cannot sustain that high number of film directors because the film industry where I come from is nowhere, nothing. And what can they do? Well, they have to find alternatives. So even if that those 60 students are grade A directors or, or novelists, doctors, whatever, then those skills that they, use, they have will never be put to use. And what is the harm of this? Well, it harms, well, the economy, it harms the student, it harms the students that actually do get employment, it harms the entire system. But before I get back to our own substantive, I want to do a few points of rebuttal from side opposition. I think that kind of putting in our mouths different words, because it seems as if they're trying to assume that we're cutting quality of education and that we're cutting back number of all students that can participate. No, our margin is always based on the number of unemployment. So if, let's say, 25% of students from that year are unemployed, then next year we'll reduce that number of 25 by 70%. So you'll still have a very large base number, no thank you, that can be accommodated by the, mar by the market with a small margin in case, you know, there's fluctuation. So it's not as if we're cutting back education for everyone. We're just trying to see that the people that actually do get there don't have sort of a lottery of getting a job or not. And well, we know that there are other structural causes for unemployment. I mean, not all youth unemployment comes from those with degrees. There are a lot of youth that only finish high school and then they might have huge structural disadvantages because, well, uh, unqualified work isn't as popular in that area. Or even more so, we believe that yes, there are, there could be other causes for this unemployment, but we're trying to pinpoint exactly those people that have skills that are particular, that they have to acquire through years of study and don't just go directly into the job market and can change those skills from one part to the other. No, these are skills that they work for years and years and years to acquire that basically could be useless in the future. So I'll get to, mo I'll get to more on uh, the narrative of the student that has to suffer. Yes, I'll take you. Thank you. Again, what is, what is more harmful? To pursue the thing you love, but not be able to do that thing that you love. So there is still a great number of people that can acquire those social sciences because, well, it's still a few, there's still a fair number of places in that faculty. But again, we think that in the long run, it's much more harmful to be unemployed, work at a less paying job, vis-a-vis uh, -vis your qualifications, and then not even have the pursuit of your own happiness by the thing that you actually love to do. Now, they've talked about, well, hospitals and the, the idea that look at these situations in which our hospitals are underfunded. Okay, hospitals can be underfunded, and even more so, what would happen if we had an oversaturation of doctors with nowhere to work at a decent level? 
Again, these are other structural problems that we can address, but we have to address the fact that there's oversaturation. Now, getting back to our own ideas. Well, the role of public education. The role of public education should be to cater to those that cannot that cannot use private education and that want to pursue higher performance, right? So in the sense they have a responsibility to those students that they cater to in order that you know you're coming to our school you're learning I don't know six years of architecture or six years of, uh, of medicine and after that well you've got nothing this, the university is never held responsible for the rate of unemployment or for unemployment of students and we believe the role of public education is to cater to those who cannot achieve uh, achieve expensive education and more so that they should have an implicit role in having them and having in they sh they, they're not in any way responsible for the unemployment, but they should kind of cater to it. And they don't because they don't have any interest to, because that's why we need this blanket rule. How much money does a public university get? Well, it gets money based on the number of students they have. So, of course, they'll always try to make more film directors because in the long run, they make more money out of it and get a higher rate. Now, thank you. Uh, they get a higher rate of uh, cash inflow, but they don't have any reason to cut back because, well, they cannot be a fair judge of their own so, no, thank you. Now, second of all, the rule of government. We've heard nothing about the rule of the role of government and how it does shape choice day by day. And we believe that this is a perfectly valid place in which they can shape choice because if your choice is detrimental to yourself in the future because we have seen that young people might first try to pursue their happiness in the short term while not thinking on the long term, we believe that it is the role, fundamental role of the government to ensure that these people have an equal chance in the future of happiness with said degree, with said skills. No, thank you. So even if happiness was the major factor here and their pursuit of said happiness is crucial and based on only on the idea that they have to pursue one type of education, no, thank you. We believe that in the wrong line, they don't even achieve that. Now, talking about this blanket role, I've already done that. Let's talk about market saturation and who really needs this. Well, there is the narrative of the young student that comes from a, ba a bad background or a bad economic background. So the idea that, well, they can study in this public education system, but then can't get a job. And if they can't get a job, well, that means that well, they're not well off, so they must get a job as soon as possible in order to maintain their status of living. And, if they, and that, well, that's what happens. They quickly shift their skill set from the high degree that they have to a lower degree of skills, such as McDonald's, because they do need that. And they never kind of break the cycle because they can never actually go into higher education because, well, the rate of unemployment is too much. And again, it becomes a lottery. But what even happens to those students that do have employment in said area in which they are, in which they are qualified? Well, because there is such a massive number of people of oversaturation within the market, then they can hire for less money. So even, the, even these people that do acquire jobs will acquire less money based on the fact that there are a lot of other people that are willing to work for less. So we see that there's a fundamental harm even to those people that do acquire those jobs. That's the problem, because who needs this education? If we're talking about the public sector, this education is needed, and we believe that there is good in education. It's a fundamental good, but that good is, n is nowhere if those skills cannot be used further on in society. It's not good for society because we have skilled workers that have to undervalue themselves. It's not good for those that are actually in the system because they can be underpaid. And it's not good because, well, the role of the government should be that, that it should try to maintain a level of happiness or a level of pursuit of happiness for all individuals. And if it doesn't do this, we see that it's a lottery of who actually gets to where they get and by what means. In the end, we believe that it's fundamental to to talk, to try to maintain a level of stability within students, within the level of happiness, and this is the role of government and the public funding. Uh, public. Look, ladies and gentlemen, all of that they are talking about is that because these people, after they graduate, they cannot even have jobs, right? That's, how, that's what they're all talking about. But look, the skills of these people will always be there at the end, ladies and gentlemen. What you're going to do with actually applying this policy, when you're actually lowering the accessibility of these people, what happens at the end? The demand from company, the demand from investor, for example, will be lower and lower and lower, right? What is going to be happen at the end, in the long run, what you're going to do, you're going
dekat the accessibility you even gonna lower down even more the, the the development of this kind of skill the development of this kind of majors the first beginning ladies and gentlemen no they didn't even even mention right what kind of major are we talking about for example we're talking about french romance literature for example right maybe in our market it doesn't apply it doesn't absorb a lot of job ladies and gentlemen but that's not the end because you know academics that actually knowledge doesn't even stop only by the result of giving welfare by having job employment what does it involve for example these people can see the first but develop their skills of writing the first beginning right what does it contribute to society for example even they need to, to work in McDonald's, for example but they can for example write novels for really good novels for example what is the contribution long term for example in society from a broad society for example from international society for example or at the end maybe the skill is that really important to actually develop the empowerment that you're talking about you cannot ladies and gentlemen generalize the empowerment that you're talking about is only as simple as getting jobs that's not all empowerment sometimes the way you, you empower yourself is by developing your degree is developing your self-expression to the maximum uh, to the maximum level right your environment for example you think that actually by writing novel for 10 years is more empowering to you rather than, for example, getting lower income, for example. And within think this is something we need to appreciate, ladies and gentlemen. Even more, in the future, these people are still can be, for example, entrepreneur, right? You know, just because they have some specific skills doesn't mean that actually they cannot do anything else outside of that. We think that actually when these people, when these students, when these teenagers are first beginning, knows that they want to actually take this major, even if the job opportunity is not that big, but they still do want to take that, we need to actually appreciate that, ladies and gentlemen. We need to actually know their calculation. Maybe not actually they want to get job in that field, but maybe they just want to empower themselves to the maximum level. Third idea even, we think, you know, the way they said it actually, you know, contributions is that something, you know, that they straight away like that. We don't think so. Sometimes the world are a little dynamic, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe today, they actually, you know, literature are not that famous, for example, in our society. But maybe in the long run, in 10 years or 20 years, the dynamicity change. But what is going to happen? Because government keep lowering this, at the end, when the demand is already there, we do not have, for example, enough resources to actually cope up with the demand the first beginning. And we think actually the way you, you, you need to actually calculate the contribution is not by only, you know, watching the result of job employment. So the first beginning, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm going to rebel what they say, right? First of all, they believe that actually government need to actually accept choices of this teenager and so on and so forth. First of all, we, we think, ladies and gentlemen, what government do right now is already enough, right? Government inform you that this is what you're going to take in university. University already inform you that this is what you're going to learn, and government even inform you this is the job accessibility that you can get, right? Now, what do you need to actually answer? Why government even need to shape this kind of thing by even forcing and lowering the accessibility of these people until that, that far? Because you know, the way you actually can cho accept choices, we think that actually giving information is enough. But when you're actually lowering accessibility, government doesn't only accept choices, but government actually harming the freedom of people to express themselves, to, 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 to develop themselves even more. Especially in the, in the idea of knowledge, ladies and gentlemen, in the idea of education. That's why until now, all of university try to actually develop, you know, their kind of degree into even the specified as possible. Why? Because at the end, they need to, to actually cope up that knowledge are really that far, that really fair, right, ladies and gentlemen, and they need to, and they need each other to actually develop, right? So we don't think that actually, even if the shaping of government is supposed to be until that extreme, ladies and gentlemen. Second, the idea of empowerment, right? The idea of welfare, because this is what they have been complaining about. Ladies and gentlemen, we think that actually what they are do going to do is even, you know, making worse condition in the job uh, employment, uh, in the job opportunity in these kind of countries. Because when you're actually telling that, you know, uh, this uh, degree are not lucrative enough, then you, you're actually minimizing the accessibility. You minimize, minimizing yourself, the graduate come from that. We think actually you losing the job opportunity since the first beginning because you, you're going to actually keep decreasing that, right? You keep decreasing that, the job opportunity is going to be decreased. So we think that actually this is not a good empowerment to be done in our society. Now, how we think that actually we have three major points of argument in here. First of all, how we believe that actually this undermines the freedom of society to, to express and to develop. They say, you know, maybe you are, you, you are going to be happy, but at the end you cannot get the job that you wanted. We think this is not all of the parameter of expressing, you know, freedom, right? Expressing, developing yourself. Because we believe that actually when these people are actually rational, they have the, the, the information, they have the calculation to actually take this degree, maybe the way they want to express themselves is 
through the specific skills as senior teman. Making film is something that sometimes the, the only thing that actually make them happy. Even if for example, for example, they need to actually work even second job in the McDonald's, even if they don't, they don't get idea from that. But developing their skills in film is something that actually you cannot, you know, you cannot actually, uh, you, you cannot actually limit, right? What you're going to do, you're going to tell the society that, you know, your talent to make film is so much actually lower than your talent to actually become a lawyer or your talent to actually become a businessman. We don't think this is actually a good idea, a good government to actually to, to, to be done in our society, ladies and gentlemen. What government are actually supposed to do? Well, for example, right, if the job employment are really that limited, government is supposed to import, for example, entrepreneurship, tell this, this, for example, skills movie film, to actually develop book, for example, or becoming lecturer, for example, at the end. We think actually this is even good. Second, it harms the, the research and development, right? Ladies and gentlemen, we believe universities are connecting to each other, right? Sometimes French literature also connect with the idea of, you know, for, for example, somehow how you know the French people, how you build soft soft power, soft skill with, with these French people, for example. When you're diminishing this, when you're actually lowering this, you're lowering the accessibility, right? It means that actually you in, you're decreasing the access or research and development in their country. Third of all, we believe that sometimes, you know, maybe, you know, maybe the idea of maritime, for example, is not actually so famous in Germany, but sometimes it's, it's, it's famous growth. It's, it's so power to your country, right? For example, first of all, it contributes to the, you know, to the idea of, you know, cooperation, for example, to your country and another country, for example, Germany and Indonesia, for example. Sometimes, you know, the idea of tsunami, maybe it, it happens in like 100 times once, for example. But when it does happen, your people have actually the human resources to actually cope up with that, even in international level, in the national level. What does tell you, right? For example, even it strengthens society image. It strengthens society, for example, image as a good international society because you can actually cooperate with other countries to actually strengthen your soft power abroad because job unemployment only in your national scale right but sometimes another country also needed this kind of job since the first beginning so we believe that actually you should not apply this policy thank you Okay, Mr. Speaker, the sin is the very interesting issues we've heard on the first half of the debate, but what I will do in my speech, first of all, I, can, I will go with a deeper analysis on the arguments that were represented by the, by the first government, and we will understand pretty well that everything what opposition is speaking about is irrelevant to this debate. The second thing, I will address a lot of the issues concerning uh, those utility, those merits, and those satisfaction that people get after getting their education. What the, what the opposition proposes us, actually, is to buy a brand one new Mercedes-Benz without filling it with the fuel. Go out through all of your life and not driving this Mercedes Benz. It's standing in your garage and this is the only thing you can have. You cannot practice the utility or the satisfaction from driving this car. And this car becomes old and fashioned and you are not proud of it anymore. And with that, you live through all of your life. The first thing to speak about is about the labor market. And this is actually this resolution a lot of the main problem market. The labor market operates very well when demand meets supply. When demand and supply happens, when the one woman industry in the sector requires a lot of specialists, and these specialists are produced by the system of education. The public university, and what does the government do in this perspective? The government carries of three groups of people. First of all, of students. Second of all, of working people. And third, of pensioners. Well, inherently, all students become working people, hopefully. Working people become pensioners. And this is like, you know, the circle that never ends in the government. But what the government sees from this, uh, as the mechanism that out of this, uh, or that out of this process, it is seen how it operates the best way. The government knows what are the working places, actually by our plan, the government currently knows what are the specialists are required most, what will be the social utility most. Because even if we presume that the person is gonna, will be very happy with studying English literature, when he will become a working, when he will become a pensioner, because of no, not because of not, not enough employment, yes, and the decrease of GDP and all of the negative consequences. I can recollect, recollect Oaken's law, for example, because like 1% of an employment decrease the GDP for 2%, etc. issues. 
they come to, as, to be the pensioners with the society that not, doesn't produce any added value, any products, and is uncompetitive from its economical background. And for that, in the learn term, the future students are not given even that public education they are standing now for, Mr. Speaker. That is why what we create. What happens with our plan? We increase the number of competition for these universities. Uh, the second half, please. Not exactly, ma'am. The, not exactly, madam, actually. We speak that we will decrease the number of degrees uh, and the number of sports for those universities that uh, show uh, low employment. But this doesn't mean that simultaneously there, there are no spheres in which there will be the increase for the universities because there are universities that require to do more specialists because, like, the, for example, uh, in India and in in the, as far as I presume in Russian Federation, the mathematical uh, studies are very popular and the universities are currently increasing the number of the people studying mathematics because it's more applied to their life and they try and, uh, and they actually produce more for the society and by this the society improve themselves. But what happens if we have a lot of people in some particular field, yes, if we decrease some number uh, for the degrees in the universities that are required? There is more competition as we understand. The more people, more competition is always. The more competition for the particular sphere and thus we have the productive spheres and this is actually also the answer for this crisis example because yes, when the crisis goes down, there are spheres that make the, the, the economy, uh, that boost the economy after the crisis. And in that particular sphere, we should satisfy the demand for these spheres during the crisis. This work always in these situations. And when this demand is satisfied and we have the best people, we produce a lot of benefit for the society in the form of cash, money, etc., etc. When people spend more, they are eager to spend more for all other for the all the rest of the areas. That means they're more eager to read better books, they're more eager to go to the theaters, they're more eager to pay because they have this money for the movies they watch in the cinema. That is why we think by that we actually improve the whole this is the multiplier. Now we ask uh, one now uh, I'm coming up uh, to the point that why this decrease of specialists is particularly good. Because we're not taking actually the competition from the table. When there are less people for, for the same degree, there will be only the best those guys that deserve this degree. And we say then these particular spheres will be improved of the quality of the workers are represented. And by that we improve the quality of the sphere in general. At the same time, the people that get degree they sealed themselves and with and working then in McDonald's, as I've stated in my first in, in the beginning of my speech, feel themselves miserable of not being able to implement what they want. And this is tackles minorities, what our second opposition tried to address in their point of information. Because we think that minorities with the education that are, are not able to implement are actually condemned by the majority and oppressed more because they're considered to be the burden of the society. The majority of the taxpayers are actually paying for them. And their particular mad with this. If you as a minority want to be developed, you'd better earn money and save and preserve your traditions. You want more children, you uh, pay for the traditions of yours, and you are improving the minority group that you are living in. And by that we say that this is what is the most important thing for, uh, uh, for the particular uh, policy in that perspective. Now, when uh, I've spoken uh, a little bit uh, about the discrimination, but actually there is there is one, uh, one more very, very interesting uh, thing that if you are so much want to get a particular kind of education, and we not, cannot conspel, expel this from this debate, if you want to get this particularly high, then you are finding an opportunity, and you are so brilliant student, you, you either can take a loan for this uh, issue, yes, if you are so good uh, in literature and you believe you will become the novelist of the, uh, of the century. And you have, we do not undermine all of these problems. But the thing is that the taxpayers that are now paying for uh, everything you have want to be good pensioners. And you, and we as the government understand that you one time will be also a taxpayer who will then become a pensioner. It's on the role of the government to take care of you through the whole this process uh, regulating the labor market. Imagine the utility for the overall society, not for the particular student today, but all of the students and all of your followers that will exist. And by that we say that in the learn term, the proposition of the government is something that is worth of implementing. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On the side of the opposition, we, be we believe that there are two victims of their resolution. One victim are social sciences rather than technical and natural sciences. Because we do believe that in the status quo, these are less prosperous uh, sciences. But we do still believe that they are the pillars of our society, that they are the ones that should be cherished, and they are the ones that should not be uh, uh, triggered by their resolution, that they are equally important even though they are less prosperous. Second thing is that the second victim is exactly traditional societies and developing country. And we believe that, uh, that Developed countries are less uh, influenced by their proposition because they still do have larger possibilities for the uh, university educated people to get a job. But in traditional, tra traditional societies where we don't have this big infrastructure, we believe that these social scientists are actually targeted there. And we do believe that they are still especially important in the transitional societies. Therefore, we should not, um, we should not um, take their motion for granted. I will explain this even further in our extensive matter. But before that, let's do the rebuttal on the whole side of the opposition. The first thing that we had on the side of, uh, on the, side of, of the opposition is that we need to cherish equal, equal chances for those people. Because, you know, if we have possibilities to employ 16 directors, then there is 16 directors we need, and the, those 16 directors will have equal chance. But we ask them, what happens with the other people who would be there? Like, you are diminishing competition here, and you are diminishing equal chances. Because equal chances, uh, equal chances exist only when you have equal possibilities for education. Only then you have the competition. And we do believe it is better to have 50 people as directors and then have 10 the best than to have 16 that within themselves, knowing that all 16 will find a job, won't be so eager to compete among each other. We do believe that competition is also something that is, uh, that is um, uh, emphasized in the universities. No, sir. The second thing is welfare. Well, they will all be burdened to our welfare. But we ask ourselves, what are the issues where state, rec uh, state recognizes the need for paying it even, though if it, even though it is not profitable, right? State decides to pay arts. State decides to pay culture. State decides to, uh, to fund uh, theaters. Those are the things that cherish the culture of the society. Those are the things that, uh, that um, raise you to, to uh, larger happiness. They raise the intellectuals in that society. We do believe because the state knows that you need intellectuals, that you need responsible people and rational people in your country, you, you do fund it. No, sir, when I continue with our extensive matter. What we heard from the side of the closing government is that actually uh, those people will be feeling miserable. But we say no. The, the analogy with the Mercedes-Benz isn't actually that well enough because Mercedes-Benz gets rotten at the end. Your education doesn't. You will always cherish it. You will have it throughout your life and you will spread it to people that are close by. We believe this is the value of university. This is the value of, uh, of uh, education. And their point about taxpayers, I believe it was well enough uh, explained in this issue of the welfare state and what it funds because eventually we all accept that we, uh, we give money for something that is not necessarily beneficial directly to us, but is beneficial for the entire society. This is why we want to fund it. No, sir. To continue with our extensive matter. So, no. So what happens when you have a lot of people being educated students? We do believe since there are not many people who can afford, firstly, private universities, and they are uh, left behind to go to public universities, if you decrease their number, you're de facto decreasing the number of potential people that will receive that education. It's that simple, right? So why do you need intellectuals in the first place? Because intellectuals are educated people. They are people that strive for more since they choose to go to universities. Their education raises their possibility of rationalizing the options, of getting, of grasping more knowledge that they can, more information that they can. And at the end, uh, they learn how to do what all the best that they can do for something better for, for themselves. We do believe that these people are in traditional societies mostly needed. And I will continue explaining that before that. Yes, Sharpa. Well, the point is you still have social scientists and you just don't have like the excess of these Yes, but your value is actually that they need to earn money. Our value isn't that they need to earn money. Our value is that they need to exist. This is why more of them, the better is our value. And this is why. Because at the end, 
who are those people? They say they are taxpayers, they say they are um, uh, working people, working class, they say they are uh, pensioners, but they are also voters, they're, they're also parents. It is statistically proven that if you have more uh, families where parents are actually university educated, that you have more children striving for that university. We believe this is very important because we do need them. And why these are voters? Because those citizens at the end are the ones who make rational decisions. This is why in the tra tra transitional society, it is a big problem if you have 6% of, uh, of university degrees, uh, the citizens with university degrees, because you have much more of them who are uh, less educated. Why is this? Why do we need those people who will then be voters? Because those people bring democratic changes in the society. Intellectual people, especially with the social within the social sciences, are those people who will trigger something, who will, uh, who will see when something is bad, who will see where, when their chances are um, uh, are low. So we believe that this is what is actually the biggest value. These are the people who bring changes, and these are the people who will be less. Since we already explained that only even if you have, I don't know. Um, 200,000 200, of engineers in one country, you do not necessarily have to, uh, 200,000 people that learn history, that learn arts, that learn languages, and we believe these are the, the issues that are very important. And lastly, why do you choose to get into, if you are an indiv individual, why would you choose something that is not profitable for you in the first place? This is why we do debating, right? Only a few of us would make career of it, but we all do it because we do acknowledge that helps us in the future, that gives us some chances. And we believe that people with education are more likely to be uh, to have possibilities uh, to find another way of uh, trying to um, uh, find another job, uh, to strive for another culture. They are more more likely to be switching from one position to another. For all these reasons, because do, we do believe that generally you need more intellectuals in your country that you need more intellectual people to have a better society, we do believe that you should oppose this motion. Okay, honorable ladies and gentlemen, in my today's speech I'll focus on uh, two main issues here. So firstly, I'll speak about reasons of poor employment in the, in the countries, and secondly, I'll speak about the benefits for the government and for the, uh, and for the students if we implement the plan that was proposed by the government. But before this, a little bit of rebuttal. Our opponents told us two main things, that we will discriminate, we will face discrimination this, uh, by the plan uh, in two main areas. So first of all, we will uh, uh, discriminate uh, several spheres like uh, uh, spheres of uh, social professions and secondly we will diminish uh, will make the competition higher and thus is also a uh, discrimination. We will prove to you that it will, in both of the cases, our, our case, uh, won't work as it was described by the opposition. So first of all, speaking about the science because people have education, but because they can work on this profession, because they can produce something. Only when you work, uh, if you've, uh, uh, 
if you finish the courses on cinema production and you work as a director, only thus you can create something, only thus you can be productive, only thus you can be a director. Otherwise, if you work on McDonald's, you do not do anything. You cannot be a professional if you have an education but doing the McDonald's. And why do you work in McDonald's? This is by two main reasons that I will elaborate later on. This is because either on the market you are not needed or because of the poor education that you've got in this particular university. And our opponents do not do anything with both of this, uh, of these arguments. Uh, secondly, they tell us that uh, because of the uh, higher competition now, uh, there will be fewer possibilities for people. So, but, but we say that, well, actually, this is a discrimination today because we fool people. We tell them that you can do whatever you want, whatever you want to be, and moreover, you need only minimal requirements to enter this university. But afterwards, as our opponents tell us, we will have 50 people that will compete with each other. So accordingly, our government says, We've given you education. Now go fight! And we claim that this is absolutely uh, important. Uh, that this is absolutely discrimina discriminatory because we do not give them uh, a chance to think of the market because people usually do not know all the things about the market, and we just pull them. So moreover. Let's go to the main reason that we would like to uh, elaborate here. So the, our first main areas of question is the reasons of poor employment. Here we say that there are two reasons of poor unemployment uh, after, uh, after finishing the university. So first of all, this is a market, and secondly, this is a quality of these universities. Speaking about the first uh, reason about the market, uh, why actually the main question is uh, why government has the right to interfere into this, particular uh, into this particular sphere and regulate demand and supply. But before this, the question. I will, I will speak about them having this uh, equal opportunities to educate and to know more about the spheres they're interested in. They, ha they can do it without entering the universities. And if they enter this university, but then can find the job, and they will have to, has to uh, switch their position, has to educate even more, that this is only a disadvantage for, for, for this person because he uh, seems that he has lost his time, he has lost his efforts, and so on and so forth. So speaking about the market here, why does the government has the right to interfere into that? And it was practically very uh, good explained by my partner. When, when the government sponsors you, when the government uh, gives you money, invests in you, it wants to get something in response, so to be sure that the future generation of these students, the future generation of pensioners and people will get something to be funded. Um, and uh, thus, if these pe people cannot work on the particular sphere, they we just lose this money we've invested in this particular person, and that is not good from the economic point of view. Uh, moreover, speaking about the, uh, uh, they can also lose money because people can switch to another country, for example, if they cannot uh, work in this particular country, but we have already invested money in them. This is also a huge disadvantage for the government. Uh, moreover, speaking about the quality of the universities, why, uh, we think that this is one of the reasons why our, the, first, uh, the, first uh, the first opposition was speaking about it. The, the lecturers are not so good and the students are not so good and so on and so forth. And then the answer was just to give them more money and we will fix the problem. We say that we are living in a real society when we have a budget and the budget is limited. If we give money, more money to education, we can give less money to healthcare, free public healthcare, for example. And now we as a government have to decide, do we deserve to invest more money in this particular education or do we have to invest in healthcare? And thus, uh, uh, if we see no result of investing in this particular education because people are not unemployed, so what's the worth of doing this? Of accordingly, we shouldn't do this. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, here our opponents are so worried about the professions and that, that people would know, wouldn't know literature or history anymore. Here we say that we're living in a modern world when there are lots of uh, facilities where you can find this information. You can either read or uh, 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 online lectures from the Harvard, from best, best universities of the world and this program is going on. You can learn by yourself if you want because uh, we can compare those people that get this university, get this degree and cannot go for work, it means they do not have practice, and we claim that this is absolutely the same. If you had degree, no practice, this is absolutely the same if you, you'd never had a degree but also got this information from inside. This is practically the same. No, thank you. Uh, speaking about now, moving further for the be uh, benefits, no uh, benefits for the uh, for the students and for the government. Speaking about benefits for the students, we can name at least well six of them. 
So first of all, uh, we show them the way because they do not have to search for the, for the market and to understand how many exactly lawyers or doctors or scientists are needed because we all know that we are capable of getting this, this information and we think that we deserve it. But we cannot evaluate ourselves so just. And thus the government shows us how many places are needed. And moreover, that gives you a kind of a guarantee that if you enter this university with such a higher competition, then there is a more probability that you would uh, get a job and thus you will feel yourself better. Our opponents are so much interested in the happiness of a person. We claim that person feel even more uh, miserable when he has this degree and still works as uh, in McDonald's because uh, he feels that he's, he has lost him time, he has lost a part of his life. And moreover, a second point here is that when a person has a degree, he, he wants to get this job. He does not want to, to work in McDonald's and thus we deprive their uh, their um uh, their um, things. So by all these reasons that it will bring more benefits to the students, to the, to the government, and uh, we won't face any disadvantages, we beg you to propose. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What we're from the side of the opposition thinks, actually, is that the primary product of the university is knowledge, and the secondary is money and making an employment. And that's why I do believe that in their plan and in the status quo, actually, universities are falling as a center of the knowledge and as a center of the science. So three points of clashes, and I'm going to bring you in my whip speed. First one is the role of the public university, second one is the public funding at all, and the third one, what are the social harms of their plan? Firstly, role of the public university, as they said as the, from the side of the first prop and the second op, is actually that they're here to provide high level of education, they're here to, pro to rise up the level of education of the society, and we do agree so in, in this case. But secondly, what brought up from, from the side of the first stop is that provide education for the people who are from rural or poorer areas, and this, in this, I mean, you're cutting them places. If they want to study art, they should switch to the engineering. We do not believe that every, every man, who, every student who wants to study art is able actually to study engineering and he's not or she is not going to actually provide her, uh, her or himself a job if they're not feeling right to, to study that kind of science. But what we brought from the second half of the table, that the most important role of the university is that they are center of the knowledge. And in the beginning, like two, two or three centuries ago, they're funding together knowledge actually. There's the, what was the pr primary actually causing in such a, to share it among universities in the society, no thank you, in the society, in your families actually, in your smaller communities, your town and so on. And Selena was talking about your work, you as a working class. If your parents are actually educated in university, you're most likely to get to go to university yourself in those, those meetings. In this case, we do believe that the social, social sciences are the ones who are discriminated in, uh, by this motion because the social sciences are the ones who are actually failing in the time of crisis because they're not profitable enough. We do believe that in a time of crisis, uh, the state should, no thank you, should funding the social scientists as a culture and so on. I'm going to bring it in my, in my second clash. No thank you. So basically, this is, we do believe that in the stat status quo, in today's world, university have actually failed because of the demand to employ all of their students. They're actually adjusting to the, to, 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 to the market. That is the problem. We do believe that they're private university who should do so. If they're fine, a profitable enough to, to develop culture, it should be so. In a public university, the knowledge should be should be developed at, at all. So actually, what we do be that, believe that is fundamentally wrong. The money he is, is, is fundamentally wrong. We do believe that you, if, if you can earn money, you should do so. We don't think that all of those students are going to work in the McDonald's, firstly. Secondly, the, some of 
of them are going to change the profession and the VIP speaker of the government saying they're going to educate even more. What is the problem if you are switching profession and educating even more? You're more educated men. You're not leaving the country because in a, in a transitional society, transitional countries such as Serbia, Bosnia or Croatia or Balkans and etc. Et et the one who is leaving the country all the technical uh, technical students are the one for engineering and so on. Not leaving the social sciences. No, thank you. So what basically we do believe that is happening right now? We do believe that in this case, you are cutting the number of the people which are going to develop social scientists, which are going to develop art, which are going to, no, thank you, which are going to develop culture, which are going to bring the changes in that society. And that's where I come to the public, fund, uh, public funding. State is publicly funding those areas which are fundamentally important for the society, such as healthcare, healthcare, such as culture, actually. In the time of crisis, the culture and arts are actually the ones who are suffering the most. In these cases, they're not developing enough, and it's harming them. In this, in, in, by their plan, actually, what is going to happen is that they're going to be cut even more. In this, we do believe that state actually should step out and fund them, uh, fund them as they fund them right now, so they can actually develop them. The second. By learning, the social sciences are actually that you, that you doesn't need you doesn't need to develop your to develop yourself by working somewhere. You, you are developing yourself by reading, by studying, and etc. etc. And you are doing doing it in university, not by only by working. So that's basically our plan. So effects on the society. Fifth October Revolution in Serbia actually was brought by the philosophers, and that is the main thing here. The former, uh, fr former prime minister of the Serbia, which brought the, the change in Serbia, was philosopher, actually. And you are, no thank you, you are actually cutting this one. We do believe that philosophers, social scientists, uh, uh, artists are actually important for, for the society. You are, if you are educated in that matter, you are actually, no thank you, you are actually if you are educating, you are educating citizen. You are educating not only yourself, you are educating the, your envir environment at all. You are promoting the, in, in these kind of things. In, transi in transitional societies, there are actually very less very small number of percent of educated people in those societies. If you are eager to study some of these scientists, we do believe that states should provide you a chance to do so. If you cut the, that number, if you say only 16 pe people can actually study film production, we do not believe that it's bringing the change in the film production in any country because only 16 people per year is not enough. You're diminishing competition in that matter because you're saying only you of 16 of the whole country of the millions are able Able actually to study that. No, thank you. So, back to, why do we believe that is fundamentally important for the developing country and uh, countries which are in transition? Because when you are developing some uh, some society, you are actually developing them by an education, not only by a technical education, but a social education. Because when you are de developing political theory, for example, or a debate actually, or a debate which is not actually profitable in many countries, actually, you are developing your mind, you are developing your sta your state of mind, and you are not developing only the state of mind of you. You are developing the state of mind of your of your environment, of your McDonald's co-worker places, people in there. So basically, why do we we believe that is fundamentally wrong. Firstly, because the, the goal of the of the public university is actually to develop a knowledge, all kinds of knowledge, not, not only technical knowledge. The second thing is we do believe that is this is harming actually the social scientists. Social sciences, the more the arts, uh, arts, the more. Thirdly, we do believe that in a time of crisis, state should be providing for the fundamentally important things in a society, which is going to develop the, the society even more. And thirdly, we do believe that the effect for the society especially the one we're developing right now, is the, is the harmless the most. Because of all of these reasons, we beg you to oppose this motion.